What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, my prediction was wrong. I predicted Jamel Charlo would win this fight, this highly anticipated, undisputed rematch between two-time junior middleweight world champion, who is currently the unified junior middleweight world champion, Jamel Lyons Only Charlo, who went into this rematch with undefeated WBO junior middleweight world champion, Arch Argentinian star boxer, Brian Castano. Jamel Charlo, he is uh, 34 wins, one loss, one draw, 20, uh, 18 wins by way of knockout. He is 31 years of age, six feet tall with a 74 inch arm reach. Brian Castano uh, was going into this fight undefeated. And I thought that Jamel Charlo would win a unanimous decision. But how wrong I was. It was a nip and tuck fight. They were going back and forth. But I thought that Jamel Charlo, he started to separate himself late, okay? He won uh, um, seven, eight, and nine clearly, okay? But then ultimately, I thought he was going to win a unanimous decision to become undisputed, but I was wrong. He then stopped and dropped Brian Castano twice in the 10th round to become the undisputed junior middleweight world champion, okay? Uh, this was an entertaining fight. This is fight of the year. Every single round was entertainment. Every single round was nip and tuck. Every single round, they was going back and forth. Every single round, there was no lulls in this fight. There was no boring moments in this fight, okay? Jamel Charlo would land a three-punch combination. Brian Castano come back with a right hand. Uh, Brian Castano land a two-punch combination to the body. Jamel Charlo come back with a right hand left uppercut, right? All night long, they were answering each other's clean punches, okay? But ultimately, in the 10th round, Jamel Charlo, he landed an uppercut on the inside that was big. And you could see it rattled Brian Castano. And it's late in the fight. He was starting to fatigue. But then Jamel Charlo, he landed a hook on the inside in the 10th round. And a de delayed reaction, Brian Castano just crumbled to his knees, okay? Uh, Jamel Charlo was essentially holding him up at that point. He crumbled down to his knees. Uh, then he got up, but he was a little wobbly. You could see Jamel Charlo was a closer. So you can see uh, that Brian Castano was on unsturdy legs, okay? And the referee allowed it to continue. And Jamel Charlo, he got back on the, uh, the attack. Uh, he started letting his hands go. Caught Brian Castano, dropped him again. Uh, Brian Castano couldn't get back to his feet. Referee waved it off in the 10th round. But this was a close fight. Uh, I had it. Three first three rounds to Jamel Charlo, uh, one, two, and three to Jamel Charlo, uh, four, five, and six to Brian Castano. Uh, then Jamel Charlo, he started to separate himself. Okay, I thought he won seven, eight, and nine clearly. Okay, now uh, seven was a a, a, a fight uh, around where you know um you could, it could go either way, right? But uh, uh um nine, uh, seven, eight, and nine. Excuse me, round six could have went either way, right? So. This was a close fight. Uh, uh, it was a, a very competitive fight. Man, this is fight of the year fight. Jamel Charlo proved that, you know, uh, he's a dog. Brian Castano proved that he's a dog. Uh, Brian Castano's a tough out, okay? Uh, for anybody looking to move up to face off against Brian Castano uh, and Brian Castano, Jamel Charlo, after the fight, he stated that uh, he could possibly look to go to... Uh, um, uh, middleweight to 160, okay, and say he's going to go to 160 and do it all over again, and we could possibly see his identical twin brother, who's the undefeated two-division WBC reigning middleweight world champion, move up to 168, right? Uh, so with that said, you know, uh, uh, he stated that, you know, um, you know, he could possibly go up to, to middleweight and look to do it all over again, right? Uh, and uh, with that said, man, this was entertaining, man. I have to put Jamel Charlo in my top three best pound for pound fighters. I got Terrence Crawford at number one. I got Errol Spence at number two. I got Jamel Charlo at number three, for sure. After this performance, uh, Jamel Charlo, he never disappoints. His fight with Tony Harrison, uh, he didn't uh, disappoint the first fight or the rematch. Uh, his fight with uh, Brian Castano, the first fight or the rematch, he didn't disappoint. Uh, you know, his fights with Austin Trout, he didn't disappoint. He never disappoints, okay? With Hatley, he didn't disappoint in that fight. You know, uh, all his fights are entertaining. The Erickson Lumen fight, he didn't disappoint in that fight. The Jason Rosario fight, he didn't disappoint in that fight. Becoming unified champion. 
you know, uh, he's always, you know, uh, showing up, showing out. He's always in shape. He's dedicated to the sport of boxing. Uh, I have Jamel Charlo, now that four division world champion, Mexican superstar boxer, Saul Canelo Alvarez has lost for the second time. And he did so big. Canelo Alvarez lost the first fight to Floyd Mayweather back in 20, 2013, September of 2013. He lost that fight big. He lost every single round. Then uh, last past Saturday, he fought against uh, WBA light heavyweight world champion, uh, Russian superstar boxer Dmitry Bivol, and he, he lost all but three rounds in that fight, okay? Uh, then he has questionable loss, questionable wins, where he won the fight against Erislandi Lara, but many people felt like he lost that fight. The two fights with Triple G, many people feel like he lost that fight. So he has questionable wins and two big losses. So I believe that now Jamel Charlo, close fight, but he closed the show, okay? He ended it. He closed the show. Jamel Charlo has fought everybody in 154. Uh, you know, he beat the man who beat the man who beat the man. The fight we wanted to see a unification about between him and uh, uh, Swift Jarrett Hurd. Jared Hurd was the unified champion. He ended up losing to Julian J. Rod Williams, who ended up losing to Jason Rosario. And Jamel Charlo ended up knocking out and stopping Jason Rosario for the belts. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, uh, he fights Brian Castano. Okay. Uh, who arguably beat Erislan De Lara. That fight ended in a draw. He fights him. First fight ends in a draw. He goes back. He does it again. And he closes the show in the 10th round in a close fight. But like I said, I thought Jamel Charlo won the first three rounds. I thought Brian Castano may have won the th next three rounds. Then seven, eight, and nine, I thought Jamel Charlo won those rounds. Uh, so I had him up six rounds to three going into the 10th round. And uh, he then closed the show in the 10th round. So with that said, you know, um, Jamel Charlo was top three best pound for pound. No doubt about it. Uh, I would like to see now Jamel Charlo face off against Sebastian Fundora. Uh, Sebastian Fundora, who... Uh, had an action-packed fight of the year fight uh, against um, Erickson the Hammer Lubin. You know, um, he stopped Erickson Lubin. I would like to see Jamel Charlo face off against Sebastian Fundora, who was ringside, uh, the towering Inferno, who's six foot six with an 80 plus inch arm reach, fighting at 154. I would love to see uh, Jamel Charlo versus Sebastian Fundora before he exits 154, okay? Uh, he came in this fight at 152. So I know he can still make the weight. Uh, and I know that Jamal Charlo, his identical twin brother, is still going to campaign at 160. Uh, so I would like to see Jamal Charlo fight Sebastian Fedora, defend his undisputed titles, then move up, okay? Uh, Jamal Charlo at that time, I believe, will move up, you know, to 168. Uh, and then we can see J Jamal Charlo possibly face off against, you know, uh, Jaime Munguia, okay? Uh, that was talked about when they was at 154. So Jaime Munguia, there's fights to be made at 164, uh, Jamel Charlo. So uh, I would love to see him move up, but I would like to see him defend his titles against Sebastian Fundora and completely clear out 154 before he goes to 160. Again, I was highly impressed. You know, uh, Brian Castano uh, uh, is, is better than what people give him credit for. Brian Castano is a dog. Uh, Brian Castano, you know, is very game. He's very awkward. Uh, he has a you know, very difficult style, you know, um, you know, Argentinian boxing is very difficult to deal with. We know Mar Marcos El Chino Madonna, uh, Sergio Martinez, their styles is, is very difficult to deal with that style. Okay. Uh, and he, he was able to deal with the style. And so with that said, you know, um, I would like to see him, uh, uh, after he weathered this storm with, with, uh, um, you know, um, with Brian Castano, uh, I would like to see him go ahead and, and face off against Sebastian Fundora. Close the book on 154. You absolutely cleaned out 154. Uh, then go up to 160. That's only one fight away. Sebastian Fundora uh, is the WBC uh, mandatory challenger for Jamel Charlo. Would we'll love to see that fight before the year is up. Uh, and then see Jamel Charlo move up and attempt to do it at 160. Uh, but again, I was highly impressed with the performance of Jamel Charlo and Brian Castano for that matter. Both guys laid it all on the line tonight. Both nobody left anything up uh, to uh, to chance. Nobody left uh, uh, anything at, at home. They left it all in the ring. And kudos to Jamel Charlo. Kudos to Brian Castano. Uh, they gave everything they had. This is what boxing is all about. Now that Lubin Fedor uh, Fedorin fight might rival this in fight of the year, but because this was for undisputed, 
this is going to take the cake. So Jamel Charlo, in my opinion, is top three best pound for pound fighters in the world. And we got to see what he do moving forward. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue. Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All in one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire L. D B C shout out to new media shout out to black media raw make sure you like and share the videos that's all i got for y'all peace